Welcome to PAX East 2017 and welcome to the Intel booth. We are going to check out the top three laptops and we have some special ones here. Also, thank you to Intel who brought us here to PAX East 2017. Check out unlocked.newegg.com for some special deals on processors while supplies last. First off, we're going to check out the biggest, heaviest, most ridiculous laptop, even though it probably shouldn't be allowed to be called that, that I have personally ever seen. It has a curved 2560 by 1080 screen, it is IPS, has a 120 hertz display, and it's just nuts. Below that display, it has a full Cherry MX Brown mechanical keyboard, the same that you would have on a desktop, and on the right hand side there's a touchpad where you can flip it over and get a number pad as well. Inside it has an Intel Core i7-7820HK, two GTX 1080s in SLI, 64 gigs of RAM, a one terabyte RAID 0 of NVMe drives, and a one terabyte hard drive. This is why it needs its five fans and nine internal heat pipes. The cooling on this thing is insane, and it follows that up with giant exhaust ports in the back. Between those exhaust ports in the back, you have two power ins for two different power bricks that are both 330 watts, Thunderbolt 3, Gigabit Ethernet, two DisplayPort 1.2 ports, and HDMI 2.0. On the right-hand side, you have dual USB 3.0s and a Kensington lock, and then on the left-hand side, you have another dual USB 3.0s, a headphone and microphone jack, and an SD card reader. And all of that will cost you only a meager $9,000, which is over four times the price of my first car, which is just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, they don't have any different spec levels for this laptop. You can't get less RAM or lower storage to make it cheaper, but as Linus has said in the past, I wouldn't even expect them to. If you're going to spend $9,000 on a laptop, I wouldn't expect you to be super worried about going down to eight and a half thousand in order to save a few bucks on a few extra specs. This thing is ridiculous. No one expects to buy it. So the next laptop is going to be a little bit more reasonable. Next up, we have an Oris X7 version 7. This one is still a blazing fast laptop with an Intel Core i7-7820HK, 16 gigs of RAM that can go up to 64 if you want to do some upgrading, and an NVIDIA GTX 1078 gig with G-Sync. It has two 256 gigabyte NVMe drives, one one terabyte hard drive, and a 1440p screen running at 120 hertz with a five millisecond delay. Below that, you have a fully RGB keyboard with five macro keys on the left-hand side, and you have two two-watt speakers and two two-watt subwoofers also in the unit. On the left-hand side, you have a headphone and microphone jack, USB 3.0 type A, and a full-size ethernet port. On the back, you have USB 3.0, power in, and a light-up logo on the back of the screen. And then on the right-hand side, you have an SD card reader, a USB 3.0 port, a USB 3.1 Type-C port, HDMI 2.0, and a mini display port. The fans in this unit pull air in from the top and then exhaust air out the back and out the sides of the unit so that they don't heat your hands up, which is actually pretty cool. And then to cap it off, you have a 94.24 watt hour battery, which should be able to keep you going for a fairly reasonable amount of time. I think this laptop makes a little bit more sense. It's really high performance, but it's a little bit more reasonable in the weight department and a little bit more reasonable in the price department, although it is still very much a premium gaming laptop. And last but not least, we have the MSI GS43 VR Phantom Pro. This is toted as the lightest VR-ready laptop, and VR-ready actually makes sense here. When they call like SSDs VR-ready and stuff, it carries no weight, but a laptop VR-ready, cool, I'm down with that. It weighs 1.8 kilograms, which is slightly less than four pounds, and it is only 21.8 millimeters thick, which is a fair amount less than one inch thick. On the inside, you have an Intel Core i7-7700HQ, which boosts up to 3.8 gigahertz, and a GTX 1060 6 gigabyte. This version has 16 gigabytes of RAM, but can expand up to 32 gigabytes if you want to do that on your own, and it has a 128 gigabyte NVMe drive, along with a one terabyte hard drive. You've got a 1080p webcam, two two-watt speakers, and a 61-watt hour battery, which is pretty all right, especially for how thin and light this laptop is. On the left-hand side, you have a Kensington lock slot, full-size Ethernet, an SD card slot, three USB 3.0 ports, and a headphone and microphone jack. On the right-hand side, you have USB 3.0, Thunderbolt, HDMI 2.0, mini display port, and power in. 
So we had the full range. We have the Juggernaut, really heavy, really powerful, really ridiculous, really expensive. Then we have the one in the middle, really fast, very high refresh rate screen, but a reasonable weight and a slightly more reasonable price. Then we went down a little bit more. It's thinner, it's really light, doesn't weigh very much, but still high enough performance to do VR and really easy to tote around. Hopefully you liked our top three at the Intel booth at PAX East 2017. Again, be sure to go to unlocks.newegg.com to see deals on Intel products right now. I know at the very least they have processors on sale right now while supplies last. And stay subscribed to Linus Tech Tips to see all the rest of our PAX East 2017 content and everything else that we make on the channel.